A syllogism is a new argument that we conclude from truths that are already evident and known. It is a sentence made up of three propositions. The three propositions in a syllogism are called terms. If we are trying to determine the truth or falsehood of a proposition, sometimes it helps to compare the subject and predicate to other propositions and ideas and see how they agree with them, and that can give us clues to how they agree in what we are examining. For example, if the question be whether God must be worshipped, we seek a third idea, suppose the idea of a creator, and say, our creator must be worshipped. God is our creator, therefore God must be worshipped. When two proposed ideas agree to any third idea, they also agree among themselves. The first two propositions are called the premises. The third proposition, which is drawn from the premises, is called the conclusion, which answers the original question. The first proposition is called the major proposition, and the second proposition is called the minor proposition. So we have the major proposition, the minor proposition, and then the conclusion. The idea that connects the major and minor proposition is called the middle term. It goes between the two propositions. The middle term itself is sometimes called the argument. The main ideas of the major and minor propositions are called the extremes. The predicate of the conclusion is called the major term because it is the extreme from the major proposition and carries more weight with it in the conclusion than the minor term, which came from the minor proposition, which is the subject of the conclusion. Let us review with a syllogism. Our creator must be worshipped. God is our creator. Therefore, God must be worshipped. Our creator must be worshipped is the major proposition. God is our creator, is the minor proposition. Therefore, God must be worshipped, is the conclusion. The middle term that connects the major and minor proposition is creator. The extreme of the major proposition is be worshipped, and the extreme of the major proposition then becomes the predicate of the conclusion, known as the major term. The extreme of the minor proposition is God. The extreme of the minor proposition then becomes the subject of the conclusion, known as the minor term. Let us look at another one and solve it. Every creature possessed of reason and liberty is accountable for his actions. Man is a creature possessed of reason and liberty. And we do not know the conclusion yet. In working the syllogism, we find that the first proposition is called the major proposition. The second proposition is called the minor proposition. And the third proposition, which we do not know yet, would be called the conclusion. To find the conclusion, we find the middle term connecting the major and minor proposition. What would be the middle term in this example? creature possessed of reason and liberty. Now that we know the middle term, what would be the extreme in the major proposition? Accountable for his actions. What would be the extreme in the minor proposition? Man. Therefore, we can combine the minor and the major because the middle terms agree not just because they are the same words, but because they are the same idea and agree with both the major term and the minor term. If we look at the syllogism, some men are pious, some men are robbers. We cannot conclude that robbers are pious because the middle term is not the same idea, even though the words are the same. Some men is a particular and limited idea that is not the same as the other particular and limited idea, some men. So this would be an incorrect syllogism. The art of reasoning, or inferring one thing from another, is generally expressed and known by the word particle, therefore.
When we see a sentence or statement beginning with therefore, it usually means that the sentence is about to present a conclusive idea and deduction from ideas discussed prior to it.